Hey, what's up guys? In today's video, I'm going to show you all you need to know about the ABS system on this Mercedes S-Class. So I will show you a couple of possible trouble codes reported by the ABS computer. We're going to see the components of the ABS pump unit and how it works. I'm going to read the ABS values at the connector so you can compare them with your unit at home. We're going to see a couple of things about the wheel speed sensor. Obviously, you've got the brake pedal inside the cabin, which will press on a lever, which is connected to this brake booster. So inside this brake booster, you've got a rubber diaphragm in the middle and the vacuum is going to travel through that valve on both sides of the diaphragm. So when you press on the brake pedal, you're going to close that valve and the vacuum is going to be only on one side of the diaphragm. And that vacuum will also press on the brake fluid through this line. And that's how you get the boost of pressure. Then the computer will know how much to turn on the pump in order to increase again the pressure into the lines. So yeah, and then you've got on each wheel a speed sensor. It's very important for the computer of the car to know how much the wheels are spinning individually because then it will know how much braking power it should deliver or it should cut. Next, I've got the scan tool connected to the OBD2 port. And let's see first all the trouble codes you can have on this system. We need to go to chassis and ACP, electronic stability program. Let's go to read codes, clear codes, no live data. And here you can see a couple of more sensors which are helping the ABS system to work. We've got as well the steering angle sensor. But now you can see the steering angle sensor. It does change when I turn the wheel. So it's important for the ABS system to know in which direction you want to drive the car. But if, for example, you want to do some drifts, obviously you're going to turn off the ACP, the ABS system. This can be valuable information as well, because if the unit doesn't get power, then you can see it here. The car battery is on charge and it has 13.4 volts and the unit is getting only 12.7. This is basically the sensor, which is turning on and off when you press on the pedal. You can read the values of each speed sensor on each wheel. I'm going to go and turn each wheel and see if the sensors respond. Another two sensors which help the ABS system are the yaw sensor and the lateral acceleration sensor. This yaw sensor will tell to the computer how much the car is inclined in one direction. Like for example, if you go downhill, uphill, there is no other way for the computer to know that except of through this yaw sensor. Actuation value, obviously these two numbers should be equal. Brake assist, and here we've got a couple of sensors which are located on the brake booster. So for example, now if I press on the brakes, this number should increase. Okay. On the lower side here, you've got the connector for the diaphragm sensor. And this one is the bass switch sensor. It's a five wire connector. And this one, it's a two wire connector. We've got the traction system, hydraulic unit, high pressure and return pump. Let's see. You should not have the pump switched on more than 15 seconds. Okay. Yeah, hopefully you can hear that. The pump is on, let's turn it off. You should not hear excessive loud sounds and it looks like the wirings are okay. Through this option here, you can do some actuation on the ABS pump, but you need to have the car running for that. And you'll notice that on the module, you're gonna find two solenoids for each wheel. One is gonna hold the pressure and one is gonna reduce the pressure. We've got here the front right solenoid valve hold pressure. Let's see the test sequence. I got to operate the brake. Now let's operate the push button. And let's see if the wheel is braked or not. And yes, it looks like it works. All right, so we've got here the wheel speed sensor and I cannot get this sensor to read anything. Usually if you spin a screwdriver like this, the sensor should react, but it does not. So it looks like we've got a situation here. This wheel speed sensor doesn't respond. And what I'm gonna do next, I will compare it with the right rear speed sensor, which I know it works because I saw it on live data. You're gonna see that sometimes you can get a resistance reading. Now I cannot get any resistance readings. Let's try the right wheel speed sensor, which by the way, I managed to remove the connector from here. Okay, we've got some readings here, 694 ohms. Like if I put the red terminal on pin number two, these pins are numbered here. 
we don't get anything and if I reverse let's put it on pin number one the red terminal now I've got the resistance I've got as well out the rear wheel speed sensor which looks a little bit different and it has a different connector and let's see what resistance we've got here okay it looks like nothing so let's try now to switch the terminals and now we've got 680 ohms now if I turn the voltmeter to 20 volts and probe this connector which comes from the ABS unit now if I turn on the key you are not gonna see any voltage reading so let's take out the probes plug in one wheel speed sensor and basically back probe this connector here now when I turn the keys off and on again I can see the 12 volts signal and for example now if I unplug the sensor the 12 volt signal is gone and if I plug it back the 12 volt signal will not come back either so if for example the connection is not all the time on the wheel speed sensor will not read any values because the computer will not send 12 volts anymore so now I'm gonna turn off the key and on again and you're gonna see 12 volts here okay 12.2 12.6 12.18 11 92 and that will come back if I touch it on a metal or something okay just take out this cover and here you're gonna find the ABS unit ACP and down here you're gonna find the wires which comes from that wheel speed sensor so if we back probe this 12.68 now I'm gonna go to that sensor move a piece of metal around it and see if the voltage will change okay you can see that now obviously you're gonna need an oscilloscope to see those waves and that's why this voltage reading is not that accurate however you can still see that the sensor responds when some metal moves okay it looks like it doesn't change yeah I've got the right sensor nothing is changing now I switch the voltmeter to 200 millivolts and as you can see it's not producing any sorts of electricity so this is not a passive wheel speed sensor so to remove the rear wheel speed sensor you have to take out the wheel and you're gonna find it right here now we should catch that speed change okay you can see there you've got a metal tab here just press it in like this the unit will begin to come out then you've got these connectors which you have to pull this way okay and you've got the connector out I've got here the terminal for the voltmeter to one of the pins for the wheel speed sensor and with the other terminal from the voltmeter I can try to find wire here on this connector probe it until I find full continuity like this this test is important to do if for example you suspect that there is no signal send it from the unit to the wheel speed sensor connector it's very important to know that the unit has clear communication channels with the wheel speed sensors so this test will tell you exactly that and down here you've got the CAN bus wire now let's move to the ABS pump unit which is made of three main components we've got here the brake pressure sensor the hydraulic unit which has all the switches and the modules which has the solenoids with the valves which will open or close depending on what the ABS control unit is sending the information to it let's take first the brake pressure sensor let's see this green and blue also 5 volts let's see between blue and white and green and blue okay looks like nothing now I'm gonna press on the brake pedal and we should see this voltage change so next I will remove the pump and I will be able to turn it on the side and I get a lot better access to these pins here On the connector the pins are numbered from 1 to 14 pin 1 and 2 nothing 1 and 3 nothing 1 and 4 so you're gonna need the t15 okay 12 solenoids and the valves are inside these covers let's see this pump And you can see the motor will spin off center in order to push these pistons 
from the hydraulic unit. So this is the movement the pump will do here. Now let's take one of these solenoids and let's place it on one of these valves. You're gonna hear that valve from inside moving. And finally, one of the reasons this pump is making loud sounds is because this point here is not lubricated. So you can easily remove only the pump, lubricate this tip here. If you detect that the sound is made by the pump when it's hitting these pistons here, and you can actually see it on the side here, there is some original lubricant. So yes guys, that was it for today. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And as always, don't forget to subscribe, stay tuned, and I will see you in the next video.